why would he care about us? Why would he care about you? Why would he care about me? But he does. It just seems so odd that, that the Savior of the world would reach toward us in our condition that we're in, in the challenges that we're in. But he does. It's his heart. No matter what your background is, no matter what kind of stuff you've racked up, God is a pursuer of you. And you know what great thing is? It's the mandate of the church not to merely sit and exist for 90 minutes of a gathering each Sunday morning, but to have a passion to introduce the lost to this God that pursues them. We don't just exist for ourselves. I've said it a million times at Canvas. All this, it's about you, but it's not just about you. And it's about me, but it's not just about me. It's about so many folks, and it's really cool to be, at, like, to be able to do um, large events like the Easter egg hunt, and to walk around and see some of you guys with those Rethink Church t-shirts on, and interacting with people that maybe you would have never interacted with before under other conditions. You might not shop at the same stores or go take your kids to the same schools, but you're interacting, and that smile and that love of Christ is, is just kind of permeating and doing awesome things and everything, and, and who knows who you're talking to at that moment. Who knows their condition at that moment? Who knows? Who knows the drama that they're give, going through? Who knows? They might have painted on that smile while their kids were getting their face painted. They might have, you know, did what they needed to do and get their kids to go see the Easter bunny that day. But inside, bearing the load and the weight of having been dropped or crippled or hidden away, and they walked right back into that situation. And hopefully we are some moment of bright, brightness for their life that day. Some hope, some kind of um, uh, uh, way to say, you can do it. Or God can do it in you. And so my heart's so blessed to see you guys touching the community like that. The conversations that I've heard you tell me about over the, over the privacy fence. Backyard to backyard. Here in the hurts of your next door neighbor. Here in the situations, even the divorces and the, the challenges and the, oh, the, the losing of loved ones and all that. And, and you guys just talking over that fence. Just loving on them. Just showing the love of Christ. Because you're a pursuer. The body of Christ exists. The Canvas Church exists to point people toward Jesus. It's to point them toward you. Point them toward the one who relentlessly pursues humankind because he loves them. He's not mad at them. Don't help perpetuating the lie. He's not mad at them. He loves them. And so this happens in verse 4. Let's, 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 let's read through. Let's keep going here. Um, yes, there's one. Uh, the king asks, is there anyone still left in the house of Saul to whom I can show kindness? And his servant answered, there's still the son of Jonathan. He's crippled in both feet. And then David says, well, where is he? And Ziba, his, his messenger, his servant said, he's at the house of Machir, some of Amiel, in Lodibar. Do you know what the word Lodibar means? It was an actual place. It was the land of Lodibar. And it means wasteland. He went from the palace to Lodibar. He went from having everything he needed to being in a wasteland. And the gentleman that I was talking to last night is not even in this city. The gentleman that I was talking to last night goes, I'm just lost. I'm lost. I mean, not in my walk with the Lord, but I'm just lost. What just happened? And I've been at that what just happened place. I've been there where the front of my sign might as well have said, what just happened? And you feel, you feel in a wasteland. You're in your own loady bar. You're in your own place where you're hidden away and, and you're hoping that you can eke out an existence and you're just going to make it through today and there's not any victory that came with the palace and your dad being next in line for the throne. He said he's in loady bar. He's in this wasteland. And I can just imagine that as David found out where he's at and he looked on his maps where Lodibar was, um, King David had him brought from Lodibar from the house of Machir. So King David said to these servants, he says, listen, go get this guy. You know where Lodibar's at? Yes. 
Somewhere south of Palatka, I think. It's down there. It's south. Go get them. And I can just imagine that, that as they're, as they're um, uh, heading toward Lodibar, that Mephibosheth, is, it's a normal day. And he wheels himself over to the window. And he looks out the window and coming down that long dusty road, uh, this, this, this big cloud of smoke and dust behind several limos with the king's flags flapping on the front. And he goes, it's over. They found me. It's over. I can't even run. I'm a sitting duck right here. I wonder what went through him, right? Because all he heard was the lie all of his life. If the king ever finds you, he'll kill you. If the king ever gets a hold, he'll kill you. And there are Christians who drive the long way around the city so they don't drive by a church. I'm sorry, there are people, there are lost who drive way around so that they don't go even near a church, much less go to a craft bazaar in the parking lot or a service. Flip through the Christian stations real fast because they heard that God's mad at them. God's mad at you, man. God's got judgment. Yeah, he is. He really is. His justice makes him righteous. But his justice is motivated out of his love. And the cross was not an action of justice. It was an action of love. And he sent his son not out of an action of justice, but out of an action of love. And so that begins breaking down that fear in our hearts, breaking down that fear in our lives. Move on with these verses and when Mephibosheth, son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, came to David, he bowed down to pay him honor. And David said, Mephibosheth? He says, yes, your servant. He goes, don't be afraid. For I will surely show kindness to you for the sake of your father, Jonathan. For the sake of your father, Jonathan, I'll show you kindness. I'm going to restore you to your table. I'm going to, you know, Mephibosheth, you were more used to this palace than I was in my first few days here. Even though you were born into it and only five years old, you spent those years making it home. It was the right place that you were supposed to be. And David says, you want to go back to what you're supposed to be. My heart is going to be to make sure that you get back what, you're, what you should have always had. What you should have always had happening. My heart is to restore. And God's heart is to restore. So for every sign that's in here, for every story that you've seen the front of, God has said, but I've got a heart to restore you to a place that you've always been created to be at. And some folks have to understand, you're not destined to be dropped. You're not destined to be crippled. It's not God's heart that you're hidden away. But it's God's heart that you be restored to the king's table. Can you imagine what Mephibosheth thought and felt at that time? Can you imagine what was going through him? The Bible says in verse 11 that Mephibosheth ate at the king's table like one of the king's sons. So let your brain develop this real quick. You just go with me here on this and understand this. Let your brain understand this. That he began to feel comfortable again in that palace. Oh, it might have taken some time. It might have had to have some of that time. But he began to feel like, man, I've been restored back to where I'm supposed to be. There are folks who may have known about God in years past. They may have grown up in Sunday school or their mama might have been praying for them for a long time. And they knew enough. Of, but let's just say they ran off. And, you know, that was my story, actually. That's the, that's the middle of the flip before, before my backside of my uh, card. I knew it at the front, but I just didn't live it when I chose to do my own thing. And I went and kind of, you know, did all that stuff and everything like that. There are folks like that. But Mephibosheth goes, you know, hey, now he really means I will eat at the king's table from now on. I might have been dropped. I might have been hidden away. I might have been crippled. But today I know restoration. And just like that, because of a pursuer, his life was restored. 